I guess we're just gonna be those people now who have a ton of buttons, which is fine. This is kind of a progress report, so to speak. So there's been a couple of changes. Whenever I made the first word button video a couple months back, I was putting phrases on her buttons versus single words. Um, we are in the process of breaking it down to some single words. We still have some phrases, but my goal is to actually break it down and have single words. I've really just kind of started noticing that this is a real possibility for her. And because of that, I wanna give her that opportunity because there's no reason not to. Part of the reason I didn't do that originally was for financial reasons. Um, I just couldn't justify spending, you know, hundreds of dollars on buttons for her to potentially not even wanna do it. Um, so that was kind of the first reason. And then the other reason is I wasn't necessarily thinking about it in a, she needs to be able to speak her mind way. I kind of wanted her to have ways to ask for things to reduce barking. And that was really the original goal. But now I'm, I'm seeing the value in it. You know, I see that she can actually form sentences and she can come up with things that I don't have on buttons for her. So I think it's neat to actually watch the progress of this. So that's kind of why there's been a shift. Space is still a little bit of an issue. Um, not space in our house, but space for buttons to all be in one place. Don't you not lick while I'm doing this. So space is still a little bit of a concern just because, you know, there's only so much space, floor space, I guess, um, for buttons to go. So I mean, we have a whole entire room we could put buttons in and that wouldn't be a big deal. The problem is it needs to be where we are so she can use them. So that was kind of the other little bit of a drawback there is I didn't want to have a ton of buttons, but I guess we're just going to be those people now who have a ton of buttons, which is fine. Um, for me, you know, after I realized that she can do this and she can put together her own sentences, it, it doesn't matter. Basically at this point, if we need to have a button in every, you know, footstep of our house, we just will because it's that important to me. Like I want her to be able to, you know, communicate in that way since she can and she seems to really enjoy it, which I knew she enjoyed communicating in this way whenever we just had the buttons, the sentence buttons. I guess whenever I saw Immediately, as soon as I broke them down, you know, she was forming her own sentences. I was like, okay, well, you know, we're doing this. Changes we made. So I wanna go over this with you guys. Like I said, this is kind of a, um, like a progress report, we'll call it, just so that I can keep track. I wanna make sure that I'm keeping track of what we're doing, what's working, what's not. We are gonna change a few more things as we move forward. Currently her buttons are all in a row. Right now that's just gonna have to be how it is for us because of where they're located. We are moving to a different system, so to speak, so they will be laid out differently, but I think we're gonna have to let that be a slow process you know, you don't want to upset things too much because whenever I broke some of these things down, she kind of got upset. So I realized just from breaking down the original two buttons that I broke down that although she's happy whenever they are broke down and she can, you know, have more options, it's also upsetting to her because there's a change. So I feel like I need to do this in a very kind of natural, more slow way for her rather than just jumping in and just changing everything because I know it will work better. I'm telling you guys the changes that we've made since 310, but the footage I'm gonna show you guys is actually not starting 310. It's starting a little bit later. On 310, we added a C button, a squirrely button, a stranger button, and a go button. On 310, we broke down, go for a walk and go outside. And so now we have a go button, which I mentioned earlier. I changed the go for a walk button just to walk. And I changed the go outside button to just outside. I think maybe 311, somewhere around 311, I realized she wasn't gonna use stranger, so I added a birdie button to the same area where we had squirrel, C, and birdie, because I was thinking, well, maybe that'll give her another option. Um, Pretty shortly after that, like 3.14, so three days later, I realized she was like not gonna use those. So I took away the birdie button and gave her a therapy button because you know that would make more sense, right? And then on that day, I broke down therapy play, which was one button to just say, that button says play now. And then, like I said, I added a therapy button. On 3.17, I took away the squirrely button and I added a good button backtrack a little bit here. So whenever I added C, Squirrely, and Birdie, I had put those all by the window she looks out most because I was thinking she barks when she sees a squirrel. My thought was if I can teach her to use those buttons and say, 
squirrely, squirrely, squirrely. Instead, we'll be in business, you know? She'll quit barking, like, it'll be awesome. And that's not what she was doing at all. What I realized she was doing is when there was nothing there, she would press the C button, and I think she was trying to ask me like to make something appear maybe? I don't know, I really don't know, but that's what I've noticed because when there's nothing there, when there is nothing to see, so to speak, she will press the C button, like a lot. So I think she's actually asking like, you know, hey, I wanna see something. I'm just kinda guessing what she wants. But she never once pressed the squirrely button at all. I modeled it for her, so whenever we would see a squirrel and she'd be barking, I would press C, squirrely, C, squirrely. Same thing with bird. I didn't give it a lot of time, but she didn't care to do that. And the same thing with a stranger button, which is why I took the stranger button away so quick. I took it away so quickly because two things. Number one, we don't, we've never said stranger. So for her to learn that button, we were gonna have to learn a whole new concept and I don't know that I really want to put everybody we see as a stranger because like I tell her, those people live there, that's their home, that's our neighbor, you know, whatever. So I don't know, I don't know that I wanna call everyone a stranger to her. I might change my mind on that. It's not something I put a lot of thought into, but I took it away pretty quick because I kind of, kind of changed how I felt about that, like after I was thinking about it, cause I didn't really think, it was kind of an impulse, like what can we put? Oh, stranger, cool. She's averaging 22 trips to the buttons per day and 38 average button presses per day. So the footage you're gonna see is actually her forming her her little sentences or phrases, um, nothing smaller than two words for the most part. She's been doing really good. She's been forming a lot of three word sentences. There's been a couple fourth word sentences. And then, you know, there's also things where I feel like she's trying to say something and it makes more sense because I'm actually kind of taking this serious and documenting it since we're changing stuff, I might as well. So one thing that was super, super interesting, we were outside, it was raining, it was like not good weather and I had taken her just outside to go potty and somebody pulled up and like started basically talking to me about her. And normally, you know, you know guys, I'm usually the person who's like trying to be nice and stuff and like I don't wanna be rude, but I was particularly irritated because Fairby was right in the middle of trying to go to the bathroom and it was raining and we didn't have our raincoats on because we were just literally going out, you know, to go to the bathroom. And I was just really, really still and annoyed. I wasn't rude to the person, but like I, I was like, you know, just irritated. <laughs> like, why would you stop in the rain when you see people outside and like start talking to them about their dog? Whenever we came in, Fairby knew I was irritated and she ran over and she pressed the I love you button. And like, that was so sweet. And that's not something she normally would just run and press whenever we come in the house. I love you. I love you, love you. You tell me irritated. Thank you. I love you too. I love you too, baby. So I think that she could feel that I was irritated and she was like, hey, that's cool, I love you, calm down. You know, I think that's how she was kind of trying to use that button. So that was a cool thing that happened. Oh, the other thing I wanna to mention too is she has been kind of forming her sentences kind of, I don't wanna say backwards necessarily, but she's been saying like, walk, go, instead of go walk. And one thing I'm considering is because her uh, walk button used to say, let's go for a walk. And then we changed it to just say walk. So I'm almost thinking that maybe she's pressing that and then, you know, taking a second to register, like, hey, this button has changed, go is over here now. So you have to say walk in then go, just like in her mind, even though, you know, we would say go walk, but I'm kind of thinking that might be part of the problem. And the reason I think that might be part of the problem is because you know how it is if you've ever rearranged furniture in your home, and you walk out of the room and then you walk back, it's kind of like a shock to your system for a second. Like you're like, whoa, you know, it's different. In your mind, like you're picturing your room how it's been, you know, for the, the previous time before you re rearranged it. So that's what I'm kind of thinking that might be with her is that it's, you know, taking a minute for her to remember like, oh, it's two separate places now. So that's one thing I'm kind of entertaining the idea of, and obviously time will tell on that. The other thing, of course, it could just be how she forms sentences. So that's all fine and good. Oh, and the other thing too, I've noticed that she is slower to process like a whole sentence out. And so it takes a lot for me to be quiet. 
because whenever I hear her press a button, instinctively, I want to go respond to her immediately because we've had, you know, phrases or sentences on buttons for close to a year. So I really am used to immediately responding to her. This whole situation has changed the way I have to just calm down and not respond quickly, which is super, super hard for me. But like, it's important that I just, you know, keep a zipped, throw away the key, whatever, and like let her actually put it together and, you know, talk it out herself on her buttons. So I'm really having to work on that. Um, so on some of the stuff, you'll notice that I'm getting better and there is a delay, like I'll delay, like responding for what I feel like is an eternity, but it's probably really only a few seconds, but I'm trying to give her room to make sure she's actually done with her thought. If I'm actually looking at her, then I can see because she'll look up and look for me when she's done. But if I'm not looking at her, then I just kind of have to like wait. I'm gonna insert the footage that I feel like is interesting that would be actually like noteworthy, I guess we'll call it to me. Alright guys, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was interesting for you. I hope it was helpful if you're on a button journey with your dog as well. I'm going to link a subscribe button up here for you guys. I'm going to link a playlist up here and a video just for you right here. We will see you soon. Bye guys.